What's the Montoursville young man name here? Is this? Is this? Okay, this is Kiefer Goodspeed. Uh, actually, his dad wrestled for me for Warrior Run. He's uh, he's a sophomore, and uh, right now he's ten and two. So this should be a good matchup. Uh, who's the young uh, man from Montoursville, Randy? Is this the 106 match here? Start, okay. Where are we at here? I lost. Oh, it. this is. Uh, hold on a second. No, they started at 160. So the draw. Excuse me. Excuse this me. Can't, this can't be 160, Tom. Is this an exhibition match by chance? It possibly is. I guess. I yeah, don't know how many exhibition yeah. matches they have, but I don't think it's a 106 pounder nor a 160 pounder. No, no, I don't think so either. I think we're looking at a couple exhibition matches here, Tom. Yeah, and I apologize for that. We were unaware that they were having exhibition matches, but they might have quite a few. Yeah. Again, we want to welcome you to uh, PI, PASportsLive.com. And uh, the young man, unfortunately, we don't know their names out there, but uh, Warrior Run got a takedown and some back points. Unfortunately, we weren't supplied names of these exhibition matches and I really don't even know how many of them they have. I'm uh, actually I texting as we're sitting here one of the uh, run gentlemen to see if I can get a see if I can get a handle on how many exhibition matches there are. So okay. to, again I want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Tom Best, Coach Best, uh, former Williamsport wrestling coach, and this is my co-commentator here is Rennie Rodarmel, a great wrestler here from Montoursville. So he knows the ins and outs of this gym. I'm sure you wrestled in this gym several yeah. times. Yeah, many a time. <laughs> okay, the young man from Warrior Run got a pin. And again, I, I apologize. I don't know, we weren't informed of how many exhibition matches extra matches they were going to have so I apologize for that last one looks like we're looking at the the last exhibition here before we get started here this evening but assuming they have 160 up there that that'll be our start weight for tonight Tom I, I assume so yes you know you people that uh, watch wrestling years ago it always started at the lightest weight and went to the heavy now they select they actually pull weights out of a hat and, and that's where they start the match. And it kind of takes the pressure off those heavyweights, you know, it would always go down to the heavyweight and you were you were one of those up bigger guys and, and the pressure was on you. I kind of liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of fun to, uh, to have it come down to you and know you could uh, contribute to the win that way. Yeah, I was always a, a lightweight. Started my wrestling career at 112 in high school and finished at 120 and then wrestled the weights were different. We were 127 back in uh, college. Started then at 130. And in fact, I was in several national tournaments with uh, Dan Gable. Fortunately, he was a weight no class kidding. above me. <laughs> wow. He wrestled 137. I wrestled 130 out at nationals. I was in nationals when Dan Gable pinned everybody in the national tournament. He uh, he was definitely a machine. I had to, got to work with him several times wrestling at Lock Haven University and, and just the intensity he brings to even when he's showing you technique is, is amazing. Well, if we get time, I'll tell you a couple stories about Dan Gable. I used to do wrestling clinics with him. Uh, just sitting here looking, uh, we, uh, we came on as a sponsor of the Allstate Road Armal Agency for PASportsLive.com. Oh, we got to stand up here for the national anthem.
as I was saying to you, Tom, it's uh, we we sponsored my father, Rennie Road Armor, was sponsored a lot of local uh, sporting events and 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 television broadcast of those. So to be able to do wrestling with with my father's background in wrestling and my brother and, and I, your brother something we wanted to jump in, jump into. And we thank you for that sponsorship. This this is such so, such a good thing for wrestling in this area. Getting this, I mean, this goes worldwide. You know, these kids could have a grandmother living in California and can see them wrestle tonight. This would be the switch up then at one. So you weighed in. Came on towards old Hunter Day. Yeah, there's going to be some strategy going on here. They have a lot of kids lined up there, so there's going to be some weight switching around. Again, we want to thank our sponsors, Blaze Alexander. We really appreciate uh, sponsoring and enabling us to do this. Uh, Road Armor Insurance Agency, Allstate, Webb Weekly. Personally, I want to thank Jimmy Webb for this. The Villo and the Kraus family, uh, Charlie DeSanto, DeSanto Subs, and uh, the Snyders. Of course, they wrestled for Montoursville, so I'm sure they're happy to sponsor this. Snyder's Sweet Corn, quality sweet corn. Some of the best sweet corn in the area. If you like sweet corn, grab it at Snyder's. Okay, again, this is PennsylvaniaSportsLive.com, and this is being seen on the internet. There'll be some good matchups here. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see the one I wanted to see, the LeBaron Bukowski matchup, but that will eventually take place in the sectionals, I believe. I think a lot of people were hoping to see that matchup yep. tonight, but it's yep. just not in the cards. And this uh, young Krebs, he's only a ninth grader, and he's Roger Krebs' son, uh, the Lycoming coach. Kind of an interesting turnaround because you have uh, uh, Matt and Jamie both wrestling their collegiate career for Coach Krebs. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the Yunkin boys then coaching his son in high school. Well, as you well aware, that wrestling is a family thing. I, as I said, uh, this Kiefer Goodspeed, the 106 pounder for where you run, is the son of Derek Goodspeed, a guy who wrestled for him, and he was refing the JV match. Yeah. Yeah, he said to make sure I uh, I put a plug in for his son, the next Warrior Run State Champion. So he, he's optimistic of his career, and he is having, he's a good young little wrestler. Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years, we've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. The largest selection and a low price guaranteed. Blaze Alexander. I'm glad they have a quality ref for this. Did you say he was a Lycoming wrestler also? I earlier? believe so. Yeah, I believe he went to Lycoming, Rocky. I know he was a South Side wrestler years back. When I say years back, uh, you know, you can see he's relatively young. Yeah. So he isn't that far back. Well, I think we're starting at 160, and the young man is Joey Hanford, who's a senior for Warrior Run and has a record of 14 and 3. For Montoursville, if he's healed up, my understanding is, and it looks like we might be waiting to see here if they're sending somebody out or not. They are. And it looks like uh, Bukowski, Keith Bukowski. And this is Bukowski coming out at 160. Yes. So Keith Bukowski is. Uh, 160 pounds for Warrior Run, Joey Hanford. From Montoursville, Keith Bukowski. Yep, it is Keith Bukowski. Uh, Bukowski's 15 and three this year on the season. And he's a tough, he's an excellent, excellent running back for Warrior Run football. And he's a senior this for year. Montoursville, you mean, Excuse yeah. me, for Montoursville. Senior this year, I'm sure he's being looked at for football and wrestling. He's a two-time All-State running back and um, Montoursville's all-time rushing leader now. Took that over from, a, there was a lot of good running backs previously to him. Well, this is a family tradition too for Bukowski's. I know his dad wrestled back when I was coaching and he was a great wrestler. And he has another son up at Penn State now, Dave Bukowski. I actually helped him a little bit. I had a club at your dad's uh, uh, Back when we used to have Ragnars. Yeah, when you had Ragnars, I had a club there, and, and I worked quite a bit with David. Very, very nice young man. I'm sure Keith is the same type. And they actually have a, another Bukowski in the elementary, so they'll be seeing Bukowski's here on Toursville for a long time. And again, this was strategy. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do here down the line, but Keith uh, just on Tuesday wrestled 145, so he's actually up two weights. 
And he seems to be uh, handling this Warrior Run individual, and he's not too bad either. Joey Hanford with a 14 and three record. Bukowski with a, a sixth place finish in the Powerade tournament, like which we had talked about, one of the premier tournaments in the country. And you know, you think sixth place, it's not great, but in the Powerade, that's an accomplishment. And he was also a sixth place finisher last year in the PI, PI uh, AA state states, tournament. States, yes. I know he placed uh, sixth last year in states. So he's an experienced young man. Has a run in a bar there and hasn't been able to turn Hanford at all. But, uh, and we talked about this last match, Ryan and I. It's a shame they took riding time out of high school wrestling. He's got that bar tied up, and I don't know if he can turn this young. Yep, he turned him he for turned back him. points. And he's got, uh, I see Rocky holding up too, and he's bringing him back on the mat. He's certainly working for a fall. He's got it pretty tight. And, and that he speaks really a lot. You got Bukowski wrestling up two weights against a, a solid opponent, like you said, Absolutely. at what, 14 and, he's and up, three, 15 he's up five and three. 5-0 now. And in these middleweights, when you, when you give up two weight classes in these middleweights, that's a lot. Absolutely. You can see the size difference in the two individuals, too. Oh, yeah. He's up 5-0. I don't think uh, Wayne was expecting this. I don't think Wayne Smythe, uh, where he runs coach, was expecting Batkowski up at 60. Both well-built young athletes. Yeah, you can tell this warrior run, you know, his positioning's been solid. He hasn't given anything up, just given it away. He's been wrestling, you know, he got turned and Bukowski turned him, but you can see his hip position's been solid the whole time and you can tell he's a, he's a you know, a well, solid a, fundamental yeah, well, wrestler. He's a senior, so he should, uh, with a 14-3 with a record, I think Keith is undefeated. I, I don't know if Keith was wrestling. I don't think Keith wrestled in the top hat because uh, the football. Warrior football program went far into the season. And I don't felt they thought Keith was ready, which was a wise, wise choice. But you spend four years in Coach Smythe's mat room. You're, you're going to be a, a solid oh, fundamental wrestler. <laughs> I know Coach Smythe is a wise coach. He surrounds himself with some very, very good assistants. You know, I mentioned about riding time. They don't have it in, in high school, but uh, I hate to see that taken away because you as a, as a previous former wrestler know it takes, it takes effort to ride a guy and you don't get rewarded for it. You know, how, it's how, very how important. That, how long has that been, Coach Bass? Oh, it's been for quite a, quite a long time now. Yeah, it's, it's a big been. thing in college. I mean, kids win matches on riding time in college. And when we're talking about riding time, for every minute that you hold it, uh, your opponent down in college, you get a point. Uh, and they used to have that in high school, uh, but for years now they haven't. And I, I wish they'd bring it back because it, it takes an effort. Right now, Joey Hanford is is doing a great job riding Keith and uh, doesn't really get rewarded for it unless he turns him. Absolutely, he'd be negating you know the riding time that Bukowski would have had in the first yep. period right now and pretty shortly starting to work for riding time himself. And both you and I, I was always a big leg wrestler too. Well, I, I, I know and, a lot uh, about legs, but I learned more as a coach than I did as a competitor. I didn't use much legs as a competitor, but learned a lot about them as a coach. And you saw Keith trying to scramble out of that and uh, Joey doing a good job riding him. Hanging on. Unfortunately, can't uh, hasn't been able to turn him yet. But a lot of action. Neither wrestlers are, are taking any breaks here. It's been nonstop action on both I wrestlers. I anticipate this is going to be, I mean, Montoursville is a well-conditioned team, and I know where you run is a well-conditioned team as well. And, and there, Keith got an escape. Uh, maybe Joey wanted, to on him, wanted him on his feet to maybe go at it on his feet again, but Keith is awful tough on his feet. Kind of took a little bit of an attempt at a headlock there, but he wasn't really set up that well for it. Well, he's going to have to do a lot here. His second, 32 seconds left in second period, and he's down six points. So a takedown is only two, and he's, he's got to get a big move in there. Like you said, they, uh, Coach Smythe Notman, probably not expecting to give up you know, any bonus points here at this weight. 
I don't know if they, I know they weighed Keith in at 52, and I don't know if they, if Coach Smythe thought, he, thought they would bump him up to 60. But their strategy in this match, you saw how many guys uh, were out there warming up. Now Keith is awful tough on his feet. He's kind of hand fighting a little bit right now. I think Keith feels pretty good going into third period with a 6 0 lead. And Hanford takes top. Must feel confident on top. Uh, hopefully can turn Keith. He rode him pretty tough for about a minute, minute 30 seconds there, that second period. Well, he must feel his, his strength is on top. And again, unfortunately, no riding time, but of course he could only get a point or two out of it and he needs seven. A lot of times you get these lankier wrestlers. Some, they are better, better top wrestlers. They're good with legs and that's what he seems well, like to be working to right into. now. He's, he's working trying to get into legs. And Working for that uh, split scissors. It's tough to get on a good wrestler. Okay, again, we want to thank our sponsors, Blaze Alexander, Road Armel Insurance Agency, Web Weekly, The Villa, The Sano Subs, and Snyder's Quality Sweet Corn. I think Keith feels pretty confident. There's a minute 37 seconds left and he's up by six points. For a good wrestler, that's a pretty commanding lead. Oh, you think he, he knows this could be a decent match. So you'd think right now, he's probably thinking about if he could get a few more points here and work into bonus at this stage. Run him down kind of hard. There, there, there is such a thing as a slam, but of course Rocky didn't feel it was, nor did I. Looked like he had control. And he, this guy, Hanford, looks like a leg rider trying to get legs in on Keith. He, he's keeping his weight centered on him nicely, keeping Bukowski from, from uh, working up. Well, Keith with that five point move, uh, you know, two and, and turn him with bars that first period. That's on a good wrestler, that's tough to come back from. And both these young men appear to be very good wrestlers. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, Hanford seems to do a nice job here wrestling a, a minute, an extremely tough wrestler. In a little Bukowski. less than a minute left, and uh, Hanford's got to get him on his back. Even getting him on his back, he's got to get a pin. If he just gets him on his back, he can only get most three out of it. So he's got to pin Keith, and I think that's going to be a tall order. Yeah, he keeps seeing it. It seems when he gets that leg in to try to work across, like you said, for and he's just not going to turn a guy at his hips like that. It's that solid as Bukowski. Yeah, he's, Keith is a great athlete. I think when he works that leg, if he wants to stand a chance, he's got to work up and work that power half and work up top. No, he's got to, he's got to pin him. I mean, there, there's no choice. He's got to pin him. Points won't do it. Even if he puts Keith on his back, points aren't going to do it. He has to pin him. Yeah, that's what he said. He's got to work yeah. up. If he wants to turn him, he's got to work up at that power half. And it's not looking like it's going to happen with 24 seconds. 25 seconds left. And I think Keith is going to be assured of a win here, which probably is a surprise for Coach Smythe, I would think. This is one of his better wrestlers here, say with a 14-3 and record. And like you had said all night, definitely some strategy moves going on. He let him go, maybe to try a throw here. Score seven to one. He'd have to take Keith down in less than 20 seconds and pin him. Or seven to nothing. Not doing too much. Bukowski for takes the yep, shot. Yeah, Bukowski's taking the shot. Eight seconds left. Hanford's got to force it. He's got to force this, and not, I don't think there's enough time to do it. Now seven seconds is pretty tough. Keith has just glanced up at the clock there. I think he knows he has it, and he does. A solid match. Oh, both wrestlers are. are it looks like great actually wrestlers. looks like actually looks like the coaches were pretty pleased with Hanford's effort against Bukowski there. If you're looking at Warrior Runs coaches. This is 170 for Warrior Run, young man, sophomore, Tacey Howard with a record of 13 and four. 
Shot by and, this uh, young man from Montezuma Strasser, Strasser, and he uh, Jacob Strasser, and I don't have anything on him right now because he's coming off injury. He's been out uh, the entire season. This is his first match back. Well, I'm sure the uh, Yonkin brothers felt he was ready to go, but uh, well, and, and looking at who he's working out in the mat room, I'm a, you know you would think that he's probably a solid wrestler, boxed in between the Hoffmans and Bukowski, and he's got a lot of good kids to wrestle in that mat room. And he, uh, Fireman's kit, or a uh, barrel roll there. Yep. And that was a good call by Rocky, the official, that they were out. And again, supporting points have to be in. Uh, and they've expanded that a little bit now in high school. The kid can be all the way out, and if his toes are still in it, it's considered supporting points. <laughs> Steve Budman from Hughesville. Do you remember Stevie Budman's barrel roll? I remember roll? Stevie. Absolutely. And, uh, Stevie had one of the prettiest barrel rolls, and I think uh, Richie's was probably right there. <laughs> yeah, I had a wrestler, Mac Raleigh, who had an unbelievable fireman's carry. He could take anybody down with a fireman's carry, and he was second and third in states for me, Mac Raleigh. Pretty sure, pretty sure Richie and him wrestled in back in elementary. And stuff. Probably, they never wrestled yeah, in high school. Probably. But. Well, there for a while, uh, Montersville was double A, and a year or two, I think, what, what year, did, were they triple A for you? What year was that, your junior year? 92, I think, we were triple A. Uh, my junior year, 92, we were triple A for one season that I was there. And that's, that's based on the number of male students in the, the school. Kind of seemed pretty even here. Uh, Warrior Run individual, I haven't seen these. Strauss is working, trying to work that barrel roll, but Warrior Run individual, I haven't seen take take a really clean shot yet. But. Well, and this is where you'll see, you have a you know a young man who has hurt all season, where you might see, you know, a little the, bit of fatigue, a little bit of fatigue come into second, play. Second, third period. Both ear to well tied up, not quite ear to ear. I was. <laughs> For the second period, Strasser of Montezuma. Well, from up here, and, and Strasser looks a little fatigued here in the end of first period. Would you agree? Yeah, he looked he looked a little tired, but you know, like I said, we don't know how long he's been back and, oh, exactly. and able Even to work how long out. He's been working out. I mean, and and we both know it takes time to, to go out and wrestle good a match scramble like there, this. And, and Strasser almost. Still trying to get a turn. Oh, he's getting back getting points. some back points. Got to watch that knee. Uh, could be wound up potentially dangerous. He's got that knee in a precarious position. And Rocky called it potentially dangerous. I didn't see him holding any points. It looked like it was over and he didn't he didn't he did not award two. Well he needed at least two two uh, waves of his hand down there for two points. When it gets to five, then it becomes three points. He did. I, I saw at least one wave of that. Hand. Yeah, I couldn't see if there was a second wave there. I thought he might have got it, but he did not. I tell you, Strausser for his first match back is doing a good job against Pacey Howard with her. So and this young man's only a sophomore from Warrior Run. Record of 13 and four. himself in trouble, a little bit of trouble with legs there. He's getting out of position. Getting a little high. If, yeah, I don't know if Strausser can take advantage of it, but uh, Mr. Howard seems to have repositioned himself in a better position, but still he's a little got awkward. A deep, he's got a deep half on that left side, now he let it go. Looking one-on-ones. And he's got his head tucked under pretty good there now. You no know, bonus points are going to be a key in this, and there he tried to roll him through, and Ooh. almost did, almost did. He's doing a roll there, and and uh, got a He's reversal got and back points. He's got him. He might, he might hit him. A little wrist roll there. Oh, 
Yeah, he didn't have it tight. He didn't have it locked up there very well. But he definitely well, he got, got two and three, so he got five, five points. points out of it. So he's up uh, five nothing in third period. Oh, the replay here, you saw uh, he kind of wrist rolled Howard and uh, caught him on his back. He's kind of wrist roll elevate type motion and caught him on his back. Strausser, I don't know if he's hurt or what, but he's taking a little break here. That used to be something Jamie Yonkin did all the way up through. It was a little unorthodox move, but he'd, he'd kind of wrist roll or pop his opponent onto his hip. And, and do something that you and I as coaches would tell our kids not to do, step right over them. Okay, we're going to commercial break right now. Hi, I'm Kirsten from PA Sports Live, and I'm here to let you know that PASportsLive.com has been rated the number one online sports network in central Pennsylvania, with over 5,000 views during a local game. We would like to thank all of our sponsors for making that happen. Contact me to get on the list to advertise with your business logo or a commercial where thousands. Okay, the match is back in action. Uh, third period, similar to uh, situation with Bekowski and Hanford. Uh, you know, Montersville's up five nothing with one period to go, and he takes a shot and on a kind of a high crotch. <laughs> Uh, he's in a lot better position. I'll tell you, you burn a ton of energy where he's at right now. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Especially for a big guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had some very good heavyweights in Williamsport. I was teaching what I call outside shots where you don't go underneath the guy to get in that situation. Especially when you're wrestling those upper weights, 190 heavyweight. You, you don't want to be underneath a guy like that. It's not a fun place mm -hmm. to be. It takes a lot of horsepower and energy to get them to pick them up when you're underneath them. Yeah, when a guy's weighing 200 plus pounds. I tell you, this is looking good for Montersville. It's, it's, you know, Pacey Howard here has to. Looks like he's got a little blood, little yeah. blood time going on right there. Pacey Howard's got to score six points. Even taking him down, putting him on his back isn't going to do it. He's got to score six points to beat him. We want to thank Snyder's Quality Sweet Corn. Uh, for sponsoring this. The Snyder brothers wrestled, have a couple state champions in that family from Montoursville. I always liked uh, farm boys when they'd come out for wrestling. When I coached down at Parkland, there were a lot of farms there. These farm boys have a great work ethic. You know, when you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to milk the cows, I mean, that, that generates a great work ethic for you. I'd guess they're here somewhere. I saw them at about every match yep, throughout I'm my sure high school career. We saw I'm, some of the Snyder yeah. boys at the match. And a minute and 18, uh, Casey Howard's got to get working here. He's got to got to get going. Strasser with a five nothing lead and sitting pretty pretty comfortable right now. Looking pretty good from his first match coming back from injury. Whoa! Oh. It's outside trip and he got another takedown. This is going to be very difficult now for Casey. He's got a he's got one minute to score eight points. Seven nothing lead now in the top position. And he's trying some legs himself. Got, got a leg hooked up there. Strasser. Hanging on. You saw that kick there. That's that's legal. I mean, he didn't do anything illegal. He's trying hard. He's going to get two here. Two. He's got 38 seconds to score. got to pin him he knows he's got to pin him and it's time's running out uh, 15 seconds left it's going to be hard to get that fall in this amount of time but he's trying his hardest you know coach Smythe uh, Looks like they're going to go optional start He's going to come right around front, I bet, and try and 
try and turn him. Running out of time. He's trying his hardest, Pacey. And he did get the... Uh, They bumped Mike Forney all the way up to 82. And Mike Forney is uh, a senior and he is nine and five. His dad wrestled for me. Greg Forney uh, wrestled for me at, at Williamsport. He was a great little lightweight for me. Uh, Mike's usually a 70 pounder, so they bumped him up. I don't know what they're going to here at the table. So his son was a lightweight, and he's all, or his father was a lightweight, and he's all the way up wrestling 170. Well, tonight 182, but last Tuesday he wrestled 170. Usually they're 170 pounder. I don't know what this is about, why Rocky was called over to the table. But this uh, Christian Watcher uh, sophomore is a, has an eight and seven record. So, uh, you know, bumping guys up seems to be paying off so far for Montoursville. <laughs> Getting back to Wayne, uh, he's one of the, the most successful coaches in Pennsylvania. He has 551 wins to his, his resume. He's been coaching a long time over there. That's incredible. Well, 551 wins for a high school wrestling coach is, is incredible. Absolutely, he's one of the top uh, high school coaches in the state of Pennsylvania. No one's really taking a shot here. Uh, you know, Mike's up a weight class. He uh, got a little over anxious last Tuesday. He was up, I think, 10 to three and over ran a cradle and got himself pinned. So I'm sure he's looking for a little bit of revenge I watched tonight. that. I watched that on your, on your broadcast. Yep. And again, mm -hmm. this is pasportslive.com. Uh, can be seen on any computer, any iPhone. Uh, we do have some uh, trivia questions and this trivia question is going to be going for the first warrior run caller the first caller from warrior run to answer this question and the question is who was warrior runs first state champ will get a recruiting package from pasportslive.com to any wrestler of their choice on the team so the first caller to from warrior run who can name the first warrior run state champ will get a recruiting package for any wrestler of their choice on the team. I think they said that's valued at $650. Valued at, at over $600. So that's the first uh, trivia question. Mm -hmm. That's quite what, a... What was the question there? The question is, Warrior Run's first state champion. Warrior Run's first state champion. And the number to call for that is 570-322-3298. So 570-322-3298 with the first caller from Warrior Run giving us Warrior Run's first state champion. Still 1-0 uh, there. For uh, Montoursville there. Excuse me, I was reading the trivia question there. And Montezzo, Mikey's taking a nice shot. In fact, Mike, I have Matt's in my basement, and Mikey came out, and uh, I worked with him quite a bit last year. And that extra work, Coach. And anytime, anytime, I think these young young men can can go the extra mile, work with work with somebody like yourself or somebody else. That's great. And Mikey's football player, too. And of course, being a wrestling coach, I know J.C. Kiefer, the head coach, football coach here. I think wrestling is the best thing to train for football. It certainly teaches you how to tackle and lateral motion. And I know 
the head football coach here at Montersville agrees. Oh, look at look at the, I mean, you and I both know, look at the balance and strength it takes to be a wrestler, to be a successful wrestler. Well, I had Matt, Matt Neenan, who, uh, who was a state champion for me at heavyweight, was a USA All-American football player, got a full scholarship. He had scholarships offered to him in wrestling, but got a full scholarship to Syracuse for football. I remember watching him wrestle. He was a tough individual. One of the few heavyweights who used legs. Okay, score one nothing, Mikey Forney here, and uh, Warrior Runt's got to take some shots. This is uh, Kristen Watcher, sophomore, eight and seven. Winner, winner, cousin is Trey. That's uh, winner is Lauren Watson, and giving to his cousin uh, Trey, Trey Heiss. Heiss. Trey is actually my uh, Trey's actually my wife's second cousin. Man, uh, this uh, wrestling is intertwined. Must be genetics, but yes, that winner is Laura Watson, and she just gave her cousin a great, great uh, prize. A lot of the, the Watson. There's a lot of you know Garth Watson and Greg Watson, yeah. and quite a few, uh, quite a few really good uh, Watson boys wrestled, and going all the way back to the time of uh, of Greg and and uh, Garth's dad, back to Gary and Lynn Watson and Dan Watson, and just a lot of wrestlers back in back in the day, a lot of Watsons. And Trey, you're a lucky man. You just received a recruiting package worth over $600. Hey, Mike's doing a good job riding, and he's up one nothing. and this is third period, a minute and a half to go. The young man from Warrior Run is going to have to do something here. Mikey being up away. Now Mikey's turning him, or trying to, got a half one. Looks over at the coaching bench to get some instruction. Switching the half. Right now he's making his, and I see his father in the first row over there yelling instructions to Mike. Oh, 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 wow. He slipped in the full Nelson. He's gonna get a penalty point and tie that match up 1-1. One, one. All's, all's uh, Kristen needs right now is an escape. Gets an escape with a minute left and stays tough on his feet. He could beat, he could win one here. And, uh, and there it is. Oh, not yet, he hasn't not yet. received it yet, but. Yep, he didn't break his. Trying to hook the leg, a minute Looks to like, go, a lot of time for Mikey. Yeah, hold Forney, on. Got, Forney got his, his out there. And he a got reversal. a reversal. Got a reversal right at the end, and Warrior Run uses legs. This is. Got legs Three, in. 3 1. He's, he's, he did look a little high there, but he 40, locked it a little bit nicer 45 now. 45 seconds to go. They're going to stalemate uh, this. Yeah, this should stalemate out here. I'm sure Rocky will, in a moment here, is going to call. And he did there call a stalemate. A little bit of flurry of activity there in the last minute of this match. Yeah, absolutely. I see uh, Coach, assistant coach Betts over there off the seat. That would be me all the time, and they have a PIA rule now that you can't get off the, the seat. Oh, no kidding. Probably because of me. <laughs> 30 seconds left, and uh, the Warrior Run young man, Kristen, has legs in. Mikey's got his foot. He might be able to get out of this. He's pull, yep. He's trying to elevate him. Warrior Run kid He's is kind of hanging up. on. He might get it. He might 18 get it. seconds and an escape. Oh, he and gives up one. Scores three to two. Three Mikey's got to go. 11 seconds. Mikey needs a takedown. 11 seconds. 40 needs a takedown. 11 seconds to go. I see all the Warrior Run coaches off the bench there. And of course, Montoursville fans are looking for a stall call. It's gonna, not going to happen. Great effort on both wrestlers. Absolutely, great match, great match. Three to two, Warrior Run. Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years, we've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. The largest selection and a low price guaranteed. Blaze L5. Well, I did the information I have here, they skipped their 195 pound. Now they forfeited to him. That's six points. Yeah, so they forfeited to Garrett. Oh, no, you're right. That Was that 195? No, we're 220 now. 220, yeah. In fact, the, the information Warrior Room gave me, they don't have a 195 pound or listed. For 
So we got Cerny out here now. And this is uh, for Warrior Run, Anthony Del Sait. He's a sophomore and he's an 0-1 record if this is the individual. Again, they weighed in so many people, we're not aware of uh, who they're putting out here. Cerny is 10-5. Uh, and five. Uh, He's an all-state football player from Montoursville uh, and was a state qualifier last year. Well, I know last match uh, they introduced him and, and he had his 100th win, so he goes up on the banner there with 100 wins, which is quite an accomplishment in high school to get 100 wins. Years ago, it used to be even more so because you were limited in how many matches you can win. Cerny's looking to get underhooks on this young man, probably trying to throw him. Team score 12 to three, Montoursville. Cerny's a, a solid young man. Yeah, he certainly is. Well, so far, the shifting weights up paid off for Montoursville. With this move, it looks like you'll see Gavin Hoffman jump up to wrestle uh, Hunter Bohannon, who is undefeated right now. That would be a great match. And I hope uh, if they do that, and Gavin is the younger of the Hoffman brothers and the heavier, and he's ranked number one in the state of Pennsylvania at 195. But jumping up the heavyweight, I don't know how big Bohannon is. They said he's about 250. He'd be giving up a heck of a lot of weight. This young man from uh, Warrior Run is doing a good job here with Sarney. If this is the young man that they have listed, he's uh, a sophomore in 0-1, so not a whole lot of experience. So we have a, another trivia question, and this is for a two cheesesteaks from Tosano Subs. What Montoursville wrestler holds the most pins in, the, in his career at 66? What Montoursville wrestler holds the most pins in his career at 66? Two cheesesteaks from Charlie DeSanto subs. And again, that number to call in is 570-322-3298. Okay, uh, Warrior Run, oh, it's Ernie almost out, but the Warrior Run guy grabbed his leg. And it should be one now, and Rocky throws it up. So one nothing, Montoursville. Oh, it's gonna be funny and say the guy that, hold that holds that record probably could eat two cheesesteaks. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, hold on, Luke Fry? Nope, not Luke Fry. We gotta try again. Question again. Don't, don't say the question again. Try again. Google it or something. Trivia, <laughs> trivia question is what Montorzo wrestler holds the most pin in the career? And that's 66 pins. And that's for two cheesesteaks at DeSano Subs. And I've had Charlie's cheesesteaks. They're pretty good. Jimmy Bullock? Oh, I'm sorry. Try again. I thought this would be a pretty easy one. I was, I was trying to give a hint there with, with that guy can probably handle two cheesesteaks no problem. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, boy, I don't know about that. I, I don't see him calling it. Cerny threw him off the mat, and Rocky doesn't do much about it. That could be could really be considered unsportsmanlike conduct, but that happens in wrestling. It does. With two, with two big guys. It wasn't Richie. <laughs> no, it was not Richie Road Armor. Yeah, we got a caller said it was Richie. It was not Richie. He's pretty. He's pretty skinny still. I don't know if he can handle two cheese steaks. Thirty seconds left. Score: Cerny one nothing. We do have a winner, and it's Justin. Justin Phillips. Justin Phillips, <laughs> he uh, helps me coach Loyal Sock Elementary, and he's right, it's Rennie, <laughs> Road Armo. He's in Pittsburgh. I tried to, I tried to give a hint there with being able to eat the two cheesesteaks, but. Rennie likes cheesesteaks, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Uh, he's in Pittsburgh, call all the way from Pittsburgh, watching this on, on his computer in Pittsburgh. That's what's great about this, as I mentioned. You know, you have a, a grandfather, grandmother, these young men in, in New Jersey or Texas, they can watch this live. Well, you know what I thought, neat. You said the other night, how many how many college wrestling coaches were logged on, Coach Best? On our last one, it was over 120. And, and you know, some of these kids that are really, really tough wrestlers, like the Hoffman boys and Bukowski and colleges that probably want them already know it. But you look at uh, wrestlers like, um, you know, some of these maybe kids that are coming up in the middleweights that uh, haven't got the recognition. You might have a Division three coach out there that one of these wrestlers catches well, their eye. Uh, college coaches have to love this because they don't have to travel to Montoursville to watch a kid. They can sit in their office and watch it on the computer and watch it over and over and over again. Coach, why there's a break in the action here? We, we missed, obviously, uh, Garrett Hoffman taking a forfeit at 182, yes. and I just want to take a second. Garrett Hoffman, you know, took a forfeit there. 21 and 2, Garrett is, with a career record of 139 and 18. He was a top hat champion, fifth at Powerade, eighth in states. He's committed to Bucknell already and uh, going to go there as a business major. Well, obviously a good student if he's going to Bucknell, and, and I'm sure there's other coaches uh, envy Bucknell, other college coaches envying Bucknell right now. Yeah, but I certainly wanted to, to get yes, a second absolutely. to, to uh, talk a little bit about Garrett Hoffman and what he's accomplished. Yeah, uh, he's a great wrestler. A 100, 139 wins is just spectacular. Phenomenal. And his uh, brother, younger brother, Gavin, is, is right on his trail. He's a great wrestler, too. And these are just two, two big boys wrestling, a, yeah. wrestling almost a typical, even though this is a 220 pounder, wrestling a typical heavyweight match here. One uh -oh. nothing Cerny, and uh, you know, uh, Warrior Run young man needs a takedown and going to have to at least attempt one. And the young man is Anthony De Sout, Del Sout, if I pronounce that correctly. If not, I apologize. And Cerny knows where he's at right here. And he, yep, uh, he's 25 gonna hold, seconds. He's going to hold on. He's going to try to just hold on for this right now. Young man from Warrior Run trying to take some shots. He's going to need one. He's going to have to get a takedown here in 15 seconds. And you know if you're Cerny, you're just thinking, hey, I'm not going to try anything stupid right now. I'm just going to be conservative. Young man from Warrior Run isn't taking any shots. He's down to six seconds, and looks like he's going to finish that way. one nothing. Uh, great effort by the Warrior Run young man, and Cerny's a tough character. This might be the premier match of the... This is uh, Gavin, Garrett's younger brother, going against the heavy... Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years, we've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the... Yeah, so uh, this is, uh, this, this might be the premier match here. We have Gavin Hoffman here coming in at 21 and two tonight. He's already he's scoring a, on a quick takedown. Got a throw takedown. by and, and got a takedown on an undefeated heavyweight. Yep, and he's a top hat champion, fifth at Powerade. Sixth in 2015 at the PIAA uh, State uh, Championship. And these tournaments I'm not familiar with, Coach Best. You probably were eighth at the Super 32 tourney. Uh, the Super 32 is probably the premier tournament in the United States for high school wrestlers. So, so that's a pretty that's amazing down accomplishment. down south, yeah, that's usually in North Carolina. And then he was fifth at the Fargo Freestyle Nationals. Oh, freestyle, yep. Uh, that big 32 is actually run by, when I was down in North Carolina, I was coaching wrestling, and, and my... Assistant coach, his son runs that big 32. Well, we were co-head coaches. Okay, again, we want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank the sponsors this evening, uh, Blaze Alexander, uh, Road Armal Insurance Allstate, Web Weekly, the oh, Villa. Kidding. Shout out to these DeSano subs and Snyder's uh, Sweet Corn. Um, and I'm sure all these sponsors are the same, thinking the same thing I am. Just, just a really neat experience to get uh, to get this webcast out there to everybody for the wrestling fans at home to be able to follow and watch these matches. This has thousands and thousands of views. I know the first one we did that honored my son has almost 12,000 views. So there's a this is getting out to a lot of people. Gavin yeah. seems to be in control here with his takedown and, and scoring some back points, and it looks like it's coming up. He's scoring some back points on the tilt. I'm sure a lot of those views on that I logged on just to watch the tribute to Tommy and uh, to watch his uh, senior match there state final match too yeah, so pretty, I think a lot of those views yeah. were were you know for that pretty impressive uh, you know I, I know he's my son but that was pretty impressive his 
Gavin's uh, doing a great job here, being outweighed as much as he is. He's up four nothing. Coach Beth. He's up 6-0. Uh, Two tilts and uh, a takedown against an undefeated heavyweight. I, I was just reading here a note passed across. Look like, looks like Denny DeSanto emailed in answers to both questions. We're supposed to let him know. He's got to, Denny, they're telling you, you got to call in for that, buddy. <laughs> and you can't answer any of your brother's uh, yeah. cheesesteak giveaways. Yeah, you can't. No free, no free <laughs> cheesesteak. You get them free you. anyway, Denny. <laughs> Okay, another trivia question. One point, up seven, nothing. And uh, he's put him down for two. two. More. He's up nine, nothing. He's wrestling a really smart match against against a, a much bigger opponent, Coach Best. And this, this young man is undefeated. Oh, he's, he's turning, turning him. him. I'm, he's he's bending. This is this uh, Gavin is only a sophomore. He's uh, he's definitely you the real the re deal. See the replay here. Gavin's getting a good half, and uh, he just runs this young man right over. A good heavyweight, an undefeated heavyweight, gets him on his back. Good position, and he gets the fall. I would imagine you're looking at a heavyweight that'll probably compete at the di in the district, you know, at District Four. Absolutely. And uh, you know, and Gavin just pinned him. Well, this young man, uh, we're back to 106. And this young man from Warrior Run is Kiefer Goodspeed. He's only a sophomore with a 10 and two record. We got uh, Wyatt Lutz for Montoursville. Of course, uh, wrestling fans from Montoursville definitely know the Lutz name. Um, and he is a sophomore with a 17 and four record. Top hat runner up, seventh at Powerade uh, as a sophomore, impressive. And 2015 Northeast Regional Qualifier, Coach Best. And his dad was a state champion here. Carl Lutz was a state champion for Montoursville. Absolutely. Now let's get another trivia question out there. I hate to do this because we missed some action. I miss action anyways. Lightweights are usually action packed. But another trivia question is, and this is, uh, and Denny, you can't call this one in. Uh, for two cheesesteaks at Denny DeSanto, what number, football number jersey has three generations of DeSanto's worn for Montoursville football. And that number to call is 570-322-3298. And Denny, you're exempt from this one. For sure. <laughs> and again, that question is, what football number has three generations of DeSanto's worn for Montoursville football? Of course, of course, Wyatt. Lutz's uh, father being a uh, state champion for Montoursville, but there was quite a few good Lutz brothers in oh, there. Oh, absolutely. Wrestling. 55 is the number. What's your name? It better not be Denny DeSanto. <laughs> 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 Looks like we got a caller already with the, with the right number. Yep, and it, that trivia question was 55. Three generations have worn that number. Nice, nice deep Lutz single on, leg. Turned Lutz him in on a single and gets the takedown. And he's already up trying to turn him. When you gonna, when you gonna go? I'll tell you what, these, uh, this bumping up and weight oh. really paid he's off on Montoursville. He's got a really deep bar arm in there. I think a lot of people watching this match or, or looking forward to this match tonight was looking at, you know, a Montoursville victory. Um, I certainly don't think they were looking at what, you know, to see the score after this many matches right now. Well, things went Montoursville away. They bumped up and things went Montoursville away. The winner of that trivia question and the, the, the winning answer to that was the number 55. That's been worn by three generations, probably going to be the fourth generation of DeSantos on Montoursville football team. And the winner of that was Adam Lorson from Montoursville. Probably follows football. Thank you, Adam, for calling in. Hey, Lutzi's getting some legs in here, trying to turn them for a split scissors, but uh, Eric's, well, man, it's getting close. It's getting close. 
He's doing a nice job of battling this. I yes, really he thought is. he was going to turn him right there. He had, to, he he had him on his side hip, hip right there and was almost ready to bring him over. And he's, uh, Kiefer's only a sophomore. Lutz is a sophomore Sophomore well, also, yeah. Yep. So these guys will probably meet in the future, I'm sure. Well, this is impressive. You look at Montorzo's, you look at both teams' lineup, but looking at both team Montorzo's lineup, they've got a couple of seniors, but they've got a lot of sophomores and well, a couple of have, freshmen. They have a powerful JV team as well, a lot of numbers there, so things are going well. And I said to uh, our last broadcast with Montoursville, I know what it takes, because I did that at Williamsport, getting involved at the elementary level. I was at most elementary practices, and He's bringing them up. Yep, right. They might He's get back points off. out of this. And Kiefer's fighting hard, but there's uh, Rocky doesn't think back points yet. Nope. It's coming up though. Well, like you were talking about, seconds. Coach Best, how you how you work that program. Jamie and Matt jumped in there and and are working this program from the bottom up, working from the elementary. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and I know the, the time it takes, and and thank God they have wives that that do that, go along with them because I know what's involved with. Working at the elementary, working at the junior high, and working at the high school, and, and the Yonkin brothers are doing that. Well, and guarantee it's an investment. I always looked at it as a five-year investment, and it's going to pay off in the future for Montoursville. Well, looking across there, I see both Jamie, Jamie's wife, and Matt's wife over in the yeah. crowd over there. So I know them both well, and and uh, I see uh, Aaron uh, Yonkin used to be Aaron Steinbacher over there, and I see Denise Yonkin, the uh, maiden the name was Denise Barrett over there too, and. Both, both of them went to Montoursville. Third period, and Lutz is in on another takedown, and he's up now 6-0. And team score, and I'm sure Wayne didn't expect it to be this lopsided, it's 21-3. But like you said, those wives have to be pretty understanding because you know the amount of time it takes to put oh. into this coaching. It, it, it's, it becomes, if you do it from the elementary on up, junior high, high school, it becomes a lifestyle. You don't have much time to do anything else. But again, the, the Yonkins are dedicating themselves to that, and it guarantee will pay off for Montoursville in the future. It already has. And, and not just in success, but the young men that a good program turns out, and you've seen that throughout your career. A lot of good wrestlers, and, and most good wrestlers, you know, turn out to be have success in their lives too. Well, and I, I mention this every forca every forecast right now that uh, as Dan Gable, a great. Iowa coach and, and national several time national champions. I wrestled in nationals with Dan Gable. Fortunately, he was a weight class above me, but he made the statement, once you wrestle, everything else in life comes easy. And I'm sure wrestling has helped you in your career, the determination and dedication. And Absolutely. Wyatt's running, trying to run bars. He's up six nothing, still working for a fall. Montoursville is always working. Okay, right now we have 105 college coaches looking at this. And that's just, that's just amazing. Like I said, look at the some of these wrestlers that that looking at some of these wrestlers that might not have the accolades of some of these seniors, but you got a wrestler coming up, 138, Kyle Bennett, who's who's 17 and three right now, and, and you know some of these college coaches are going to get to see a wrestler like Kyle Bennett. We have Virginia is looking at this, uh, Howard University, University of Pennsylvania, Harvard. Illinois, Penn State is looking at this. And this is a great, great thing for wrestling in our area, exposing these young men to uh, these colleges. Lutz is doing a real good job, and so is Kiefer Goodspeed. He's really fighting. I like seeing Lutz. He's not stopping. He's still going for it. He's up 6-1. He's not, he's not satisfied with that. He's going seconds, for another yep, takedown. 25 seconds left. And uh, Kiefer Goodspeed's doing a great job, too. And Goodspeed wrestled a, a really tough opponent here and held him to a 6-1 match. we yep. got to give credit to, uh, to Goodspeed. He wrestled, he's wrestled a really tough match. Lutz is uh, 14 seconds, still taking shots. He's still going right after him. Stall call that uh, we're on Ooh. we're on the Warrior Run side. You can hear there. Oh, what a shot! Just called key for good speed for stalling. But Lutz is still taking shots. Lutz is still going in. He's gonna get two. He's, he's he's got get two. the two. Three seconds left. Nine to, nothing. To Nine to up, one. To pick up the bonus points. Coach Nine Best. to Look one. Look at that determination. Yep. What a job by that young man. 
Nine to one. I mean, if you're if you're the Youngkins right now, you gotta be. You just gotta be. You gotta be super impressed and 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 uh, satisfied with the effort they just got out of that young man. Absolutely. Now this is Trey Hess, the young man who received a uh, recruiting package in the trivia question, and he's a junior. He's 13 and two. And Trey uh, Trey Heiss, his sister. Uh, his sister Gabby Heiss is a it was an all-state soccer player for Warrior Run this year. Real, uh, real tough soccer player. Good athletic uh, family there. Trey's gotten in on a single. And who's the young man from Montoursville? A uh, young man from Montoursville we have here at 113 is Isaiah Gingrich, who's a sophomore. He's six and six. And uh, Trey got a two takedown. And uh, you know, obviously both these teams work legs because uh, Trey's got a leg in there and. Most of the Warrior Run kids are working legs, and Montour's all the same. Yeah, um, Trey, uh, his, his mom is, uh, his mother's a Watson. It would be uh, Garth and uh, Gre Garth Watson and Greg Watson's sister. Well, your family's involved in that somehow, isn't it? Well, my uh, mom married to a Watson. Okay. So my uh, my wife is uh, was a Watson, is Danny Watson's daughter. So Trey comes from a long line of wrestlers there. Okay, the last trivia question for a $50 gift certificate from the Villa. I'm gonna hold this up a second because Trey's he's trying turning to turn him. him. He's got some bars in and he's, he's running it, getting he's back points. And oh, he's got him pretty tight. He's got a lot. Well, he's got 36, 35 seconds left. And boy, sure looked pin from here, oh, but Rocky's looked... down there. Rocky sees it, he knows. It's, he's a lot closer than any fans. This Montoursville young man's fighting hard. There it is. Not Rocky oh, didn't see it yet. He didn't. Oh, he's giving him. Oh, buddy. Yeah, there it 14 is. 14 seconds left. Trey gets the pin. Getting back to the last trivia question, and this is worth a $50 gift certificate from the Villa, and we appreciate the Villa for that. How many years has Coach Smythe been at Warrior Run as head? wrestling coach, or as wrestling coach. Now this is Warrior Run's, uh, and you want to give a call in at 570-322-3298 if you uh, know the answer to that question. This is Jarrett Miller, 120 pounder from Warrior Run, and he's a senior and has a six and three record. Uh, that pin kind of pumped, pumped up Warrior Run side of the bench. We got uh, Morgan Kamini coming out here. He's a junior from Montoursville with a 12 and six record. This is, uh, again, Jarrett Miller, senior. And Kamini tried a headlock there, but they're fighting all the time. He's in on a leg. Knee looks in a pretty precarious position. This might become a potentially dangerous if Rock, Rocky's right on it. If he could clear that arm. There it is. There's going to be two. I thought he would have gave him two there when he got to the hip. No points yet, uh, Warrior Run. Doing a really nice job of battling, battling off that. A minute left, so this is. If he could just clear that arm and come across, there's your two. Montursville got two out of that, and uh, they're up 57 seconds left. But I said if he could just get that, get that one arm across that hip, the two was there. We have, should we tell them what guesses? We've had a 45 and a 43. They're close. <laughs> on Terzel, kids on top here, and uh, tying Miller up pretty good here. Jarrett Winner, Miller. And we got a winner for that. I think my co-host here kind of gave that one away. <laughs> they called in but, too quick. Yeah. They couldn't, they couldn't, that couldn't help them. Yeah. He's got him turned over now, tight. Tomini's got him on his back, it looks like. He's, Rocky's already holding up three. He's got 16, 15 seconds left, and it's looking awful close. Oh, he's in pain there. I, I don't think Rocky can't see him. I don't think anything is illegal. He's just got no. two tight bars. Yeah, he's just. He's fighting him, though. 
Rocky couldn't see that from the angle that the, the Warrior Run boy might have been. He doesn't appear to be injured, though. Well, there's nothing illegal about it. Absolutely it's just two not. bars and running it. And nope, nothing illegal there. And uh, Kamini's up 5-0. Sometimes in wrestling, things are painful. That's what it's about. I always coach my wrestlers to make the, your opponent uncomfortable. Absolutely. If they get very uncomfortable, they want to get pinned. It does maybe look like Miller might have suffered a little injury there. Looks, still looks in pain. He's running, Kamini's oh, running those bars again. again. Same move. And now he's got a minute, and 40 tough seconds. Thing sometimes is to get those shoulder blades down when you're in that double bar like that. In Pittsburgh right now, wrestle for here. Sawyer Bressler. The winner of that $50 gift certificate is in Pittsburgh right now. Sawyer Bresser, Bressler, and he wrestled, he wrestled for Montoursville. So this has gone out all the way to Pittsburgh. We have two trivia callers who are calling from Pittsburgh. That was the 44-year question on. Oh, and that was, Wayne's been there for 44 years. I uh, asked him prior to this match. and. Pretty amazing so that a Montoursville wrestler got that, Coach Best. Yes, absolutely. Well, you kind of gave it away. Maybe you knew that <laughs> out there. He wants to give it to Jamie Yonkin. And Swear wants to give this $50 gift certificate to Montoursville head coach Jamie Yonkin. He's driving him back over again. Oh, he's working him. He's working that half and uh, got a long time here, a minute to fight off. Young man Miller, Jarrett Miller, a senior, has got a minute to fight off. and. He's in a bad situation to fight for a minute. He's putting up a heck of a fight. He sure is. Kamini's doing his best, and he fought out of that. And I'll tell you what, to his credit, to his credit, Warrior Run fans are yelling for two. It was they were looking for one there, but I. It was they out were, of bounds. They were it could have been. I, I, I could have seen a, a one call, but no I've one really them, had I've control seen them when do they that were out of bounds. Occasionally, when they're going out, no control. Kamini's kind of really working this Jarrett Miller over here. And there's 30 seconds left in this third period. About now, I usually start feeling bad for a kid's shoulders that, <laughs> that's been fighting these bars and, and tight half the whole time. I'm ever working with younger kids, Coach Bess. This is why I tell them, don't stay on the mat. Yeah. When you're underneath, you want to stand up and get out of there so you don't have to take that abuse. And Toursville up 11-0 and bonus points here and uh, another period to go. And Jarrett Miller is taking neutral. I don't think he wanted to go underneath Kamini. And again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Blaze Alexander, Road Arm Insurance Agency, Allstate, Web Weekly, The Villa, Denny DeSant our Charlie DeSanto Subs, DeSanto Subs right here in Montoursville, and Snyder's Quality Sweet Corn. Give, give a shout out. They're snowboarding in Somerset. His name's Wyatt, watching it. Snowboarding in Somerset. He's Got a young man who just called in. He's snowboarding in Somerset, watching this on his phone. Wyatt. Thanks for the call, Wyatt. Here's a young man snowboarding and watching live wrestling. <coughs> I don't know, there was an illegal call there. I don't know what, I just couldn't see it from this distance, what it was. But Rocky's right on that. I didn't uh, he's see up it. for bonus points now, Kamini, and. Uh, Team score, man, get, looks like he's gonna, whoa. Whoa, whoa. He stuck him right on his back and he is pinned. Oh, he's get that one shoulder blade up. Oh, he might. Oh, he's gonna come out of that. Oh, Kamini fought out of that. coming out of that with a reversal. And, and it comes back, back on top. Still, and as you can hear, the fans are going crazy. What an exciting match. I'll tell you what, I was glad to see him give him the benefit of the doubt. His shoulders went down there for a second, but he didn't Absolutely. have the three count. I thought, uh-oh, he was in trouble. Absolutely. But I think you'll really give the officials a really good guy up that far to 
make sure that counts good when you're well, up I know, there. I know the fans are very critical of officials, and but hey, they're right down there. Rocky's I think he five did feet. I think he did a nice job there. Rocky's five feet from it, and these fans are 60 feet from it. Oh yeah, or more. And even there, you would think some people think he is, but I can see that you can see just a little bit of daylight now. It looks like he's down. Well, Rocky's right there. Yep. 13 seconds left. Jarrett well, Miller's really down. fighting. Really fighting. He's given a heck of a battle. Good effort from both these young men. And he fought. Jarrett gave it his best. But there's a uh, bonus points for Montoursville. I'll tell you too, you get used to that college and then you come back in high school and you gotta remember it's, it's that, uh, what, three count, correct? Yeah, and college seem to call them a lot faster. It's only, what a... Here's the, the uh, replay of this, the Warrior Run boy Warrior caught him and Jeremy rolled him in Jeremy double Jeremy grapes and uh, Kamini fought out of that and put the Warrior Run young man on his back. Okay, for Warrior Run, this is Jeremy Hanford, probably Joey's brother. Uh, younger brother, he's a sophomore, pretty good wrestler. He was a, uh, his record's 10 and 2. He was a Clingerman, Dan Clingerman Invitational Champion, and he was a 2015 regional qualifier. So, you know, as a sophomore, he's got some really good credentials. The Warrior Run, I know they spoke pretty highly of this young man, so he's an up-and-comer, but from Montoursville at 126, we have Gable Krebs, a uh, true uh, freshman here, 10 and 5 on the season. Uh, obviously, Krebs with a, a long wrestling history, a uh, son of uh, Roger Krebs, like coming, uh, like coming wrestling's head wrestling coach. And he's built just like his dad. Long and lanky and hard to wrestle. I know I talked to Roger, and uh, being a coach at Lycoming, he said that uh, He's here tonight, I know I saw him, but, but he hasn't been able to catch a lot of his matches because of his, his commitment up at Lake Holmes. Absolutely, Holly. now he can watch him on his computer and his desk. Yeah, that'd be nice. And this young man, uh, Krebs, is only a freshman. Uh, Warrior Run, Warrior Run young man's a sophomore, so I'm sure they're, if they stay at the same weight, uh, we'll be seeing each other a lot here in the future years. Gable was in pretty nice there. I, I thought he was going to finish it for a second. Well, you can bet. I mean, he's only a ninth grader, but Gable's been around wrestling probably most of his life. With Roger being a, a head coach at Lycoming College. Sure, sure, he's probably been up around those camps that uh, yeah. Coach Krebs runs. Uh, sure two, Rogers, three, four weeks of wrestling camps up there at Lycoming every summer. Roger exposed this, his son to uh, many great coaches so far. So far, this is a very competitive match. 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, there's uh, Cradle two. locked the Cradle up, and uh, he's got two for it. No back points yet. Uh, Jeremy Hanford, sophomore, is working hard for uh, back points and ran out of time. No back points. Just take them. And Krebs uh, deferred. And the young, young man, Jeremy Hanford, uh, takes a down position. Up 2-0. Team score 29-9. The caution on Krebs. You know, if you get a, too many cautions, you actually get, the, the, your opponent gets points for it. Quick move off uh, bottom by Hanford. He was up and out of there pretty fast. And he got the escape. Hockey hasn't given it yet, but there it there is. It now. is. Again, Sawyer Bressler donated his $50 gift certificate to Jamie Yonkin. So Jamie can take his wife to a nice meal at the villa. Thank you, the villa, for that, uh, that donation. That'd be pretty nice for him putting, for her putting up with all the time he's away, right? Well, a steak dinner doesn't do it, but yeah. <laughs> what, need to get flowers too? Oh, more than that. <laughs> you know, when I was coaching in the early part of my career, of course I was married and my poor wife is now my ex-wife, but uh, we didn't go to the beach for vacation. We went to Iowa. We went to Nebraska. <laughs> we sat in gyms and tournaments and never went to the beach. I remember my beach trip. Matter of fact, it was uh, Matt Yunkin and I. So assistant coach Matt Yunkin and I, uh, 
our, our beach trip our sophomore year was Penn State's ultimate wrestling camp <laughs> yep, at Cape exactly. Bay, New Jersey. Down exactly. in the, uh, down yep. in, uh, I got down there, got to, as a matter of fact, rolled around for three days, wrestled with Gary Hart for three days in a row. Yep. There's uh, Krebs in on a nice shot. Uh, hasn't finished it yet. He, now he switched off to doubles and he there got the is. two out of it. Score now 3-2 with uh, 50 seconds. I'll be yeah, interested to see if he tries to ride him out. Second period is competitive match here, 3-2 between a freshman and a sophomore. He's riding tough, has a wrist, tight waist. Looks like both, he's working for a bar. And both these kids seem to be very solid wrestlers. Oh, uh, this well, both programs produce very, very solid wrestlers. Warrior Run is always competitive. That's the one thing you've seen here tonight is, is good solid wrestling. Hip positions where they should be. That's an escape. Uh, Rocky didn't award it yet, but uh, give him one yet. Two for two. reversal. He was holding up for reversal, and he got the cradle just when he caught Krebs in last time. He's right at the edge, though. Didn't have enough time to turn him, so. Uh, Warrior runs up 5-2 going into the third period. Jeremy Hanford, uh, as Rennie said, up 5-2. Two. Five two, two minutes left, and they're going neutral. But this match is far from over with a minute, to, you know, with two minutes to go here. Well, two good wrestlers, three points is a pretty, pretty good lead because you need more in a takedown to win it. But young, young Krebs is doing a great job in on a single there, but right at the edge, uh, he's gonna trying to pull him back in. That's how Krebs scored last time on on that missed shot. And they're out of bounds, new start. Now that's one thing you see in college now. They'll give them a lot more time to work on that edge. Than no, they were well, I think the rule in college, if it starts in the circle, they can actually finish it out, out of bounds. I've seen that uh, where you think they're out of bounds in the ref awards too. Kind of getting like freestyle. Freestyle actually has two rings in there. And if you start within that used to be, freestyle changes constantly. But when I was in that capacity and trying out for Olympics, etc. There were two rings. If you started your action in the first ring, you could go completely out of bounds and still get your points. 58 seconds, and uh, Warrior Run Young Man is up. Oh, well, uh, there was up a quick take two. Down. Yeah. He had a little lapse of uh, judgment there for Young Krebs. Uh, Hanford just kind of spun around him. I'm sure Gable didn't want that to happen, but now he's up 7-2 and 40 seconds left. And a couple of these takedowns, I think, have just been freshman, you know, takedowns here. I don't think you'll see Gable giving these up in years to come. Nope, and I'm sure his dad is not happy with that takedown anyway, but he's, I'm sure he's proud of his son. He's doing a great job out there. I'm just speaking from experience. I wouldn't have been happy if my son would have done that. Absolutely. 10 seconds and it looks like it might end, although the Warrior Run kid is uh, trying for a fall. Went out front there and he's trying to turn him. Krebs is doing a good job. But these young these young men know when they when they make that mistake too, they're you know they're not happy with themselves oh, when they make that mental lapse. Absolutely, yeah. But it was a good battle. Team score 12 Montoursville in favor of Montoursville. Next minute for Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years, we've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. The largest selection and a low price guaranteed. A sophomore from Montoursville, seven and eight, but he is uh, five and one in his last six matches. So he's been coming on a little strong here the last uh, couple weeks. And his dad was a, a great football player, wide receiver here for uh, the Warriors back in the day. And I know his dad sitting in the stands and. His dad was also a basketball player. Yeah, Eric so uh, Eric was an all-state uh, football, wide receiver football player from Montoursville. A great baseball player. He ended up playing football uh, and baseball at Lock Haven University. He's uh, probably was hoping his son would lean towards basketball, but I'm sure Eric's proud of his son being a good wrestler. Actually, you know what? Eric, uh, Eric was a wrestler in uh, elementary and junior high and always loved wrestling. So uh, he's, he's, he's actually a big wrestling, good fast shot. Oh. 
And as a... Nope, caught him and took him on his back. Yes, he did. And there's a lot of time for poor uh, Charlie to... To fight off here. Fought off, but he's doing a great job fighting. He is fighting doing a good and, job uh, fighting. Man, it's cranking the neck yeah, there. The kid is cranking it. And that's, that might become I a was potential afraid this dangerous. Kid was a little strong. That might become potential. Well, and he's coming around. Good job. Got out of it. Off. Good job fighting off. Got out of it. As a contractor, I got to find myself. I, I I know Charlie well and have, have hunted with him. I got to find. Be careful here, not to be rooting for him <laughs> from from this position. Yeah, you got to be careful what you say. You gave away that 44 years of coaching there. <laughs> And of course, to a Montoursville person. I thought it was going to be too hard to yeah. guess, Coach. I really did. <laughs> now we're up 5 0. Uh, Bradley Steyer, a senior. And Charlie's only a sophomore, isn't he? Yeah, he's only a sophomore. I think we'll see some good things from him to come in the future. I really do. He's, he's a good little athlete in his own right. Well, he, he showed some guts fighting out of that pitting combination, that's for sure. And Bradley's not a bad wrestler. He's got a 13-3 record. Escape. Score 5-1 to one now. Charlie's another long, lanky wrestler. Montersville seems to have a lot of those guys. They're, they're hard to wrestle. See, both Hoffmans are, are lanky guys and use their leverage exceptionally well. Hey, it hit Charlie night and day, too. He's really developed physically since last year. He's a lot stronger than, than he was uh, last season. Caution on, uh, caution on Bradley. Jumped the gun a little bit there. As I said, a wrestler like Charlie hits the weight room, commits himself to... He tries to, to sit out switch and Bradley counters it with uh, some good bars he's in there. pretty tight right there now. With a, that yep. half Nelson bar combination. This is going to be potentially a little trouble for him. Yeah, Charlie's fighting it out of it very well, but uh, those bars are tough. Again, Bradley's a senior. Got quite a bit of experience. I'm sure this is in his first year of wrestling. Yeah, he did a nice job coming back up to his base there. Yep. Score still 5 1, a minute and 30 seconds, almost 30 seconds left in second period. A lot of time here. Good tight waist by Bradley. Uh, looked like Charlie was attempting a stand up there. He's back up. Up, up. up there's one. 5-2. Takedown here by Charlie would make it real interesting. Again, while they're hand fighting here, we want to thank our sponsors. Now there's 116 college coaches watching this. What a great recruiting tool for these coaches. 116 college coaches are viewing this right now. And that goes to show the commitment of those college coaches. What are they doing with their evening when they're done with practice? Watching, watching high school wrestling matches, looking for their next, their next uh, wrestler. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Montoursville has Bukowski and, and the older Hoffman. College is a guarantee to looking at that, and Warrior Run still has their best young man, in my opinion, Zach LeBaron, at least credential-wise, uh, coming up, but I'm sure college is, I think, he's a senior, I think, this year. Yes, he is, he's 14-0 and, and quite a resume, and I know colleges are looking at him as well, so this is a great opportunity for these coaches to check out these wrestlers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I heard Bukowski's going to play football in, in college, but I'm sure that's not going to stop a lot of wrestling offers coming through for him. Too. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure Roger Krebs is right on his heels. Absolutely. And a young man like him, that would be a nice fit. You'd be able it to play would. football and wrestle at, yes, a, at a college like Lycoming. Absolutely, he could. And he'd be probably a great football player oh. at Lycoming. Set all kinds of records here at uh, Montoursville. Oh. Nice scramble there. Charlie doing a nice job of getting back to square with him there, not giving up points right there. Second period's almost up, and uh, score's competitive, five to two. And Tursal young man is down by three. Let's, again, uh, want to thank our sponsors, Blaze Alexander, Road Armo Insurance Agency, Allstate, Web Weekly. Jimmy over there does a lot for sports. Wow, quick escape by Warrior Run, young man. Score's now six to two. 
uh, the villa. We want to thank the Krauss family for our, our trivia question uh, <coughs> reward and sponsoring this. And, and Charlie down here, DeSanto Subs. If you like a good sub, Charlie makes one of the best. And uh, Snyder's Quality Sweet Corn. If you like sweet corn, they have probably the best in Pennsylvania. It was a nice follow-up shot. He tried to hit a shrug right there and, and missed it. And then and then on Toursville, Charlie Steinbacher followed up with a shot right off that missed shrug. Nice nice action. Uh, it's Warrior Run, young man, again, as a senior. Bradley Steyer, 13-3 and three record. And... Uh, Pretty solid. He's a pretty solid young man. Absolutely. Charlie, I think, is doing a great job being a sophomore. You know, Warrior Run's got to go for those bonus points, and, and, and Montoursville knows that, and they're, they're being tough. I don't think, uh, I don't know how many bonus points Warrior Run has gotten, but I know Montoursville, they really benefited by shifting weights around the way they did. You know, I'm sure the Yonkin brothers are young enough now. They probably work out with all those guys themselves. I know I did when I was coaching. I worked out with all my wrestlers. Yep, I know they are. Oh, well, forget it. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, Matt and Jamie um, wrestled. Uh, I'm sure they've worked out with them. Now, I know Matt... Uh, I know Matt's had some back trouble, Coach Best. So oh, he has, yeah. I, I, I know he still works out with him and, and maybe some real light drilling, I think. But uh, I think his days of being able to really uh, to really wrestle hard live, um, you know, are, are behind him. I know he's had 25 some. 25 seconds, and, uh, you know, Charlie's doing a great job and, and keeping it no bonus points. And uh, Steyer gets a shot and runs him out of bounds. And well, I know I wrestled with my kids all the time, and that's why I have a replaced shoulder and a replaced hip. And <laughs> that's what you get, and, and, huh? my, and my right shoulder needs replaced because Charlie hey, trying, trying his best to, to, trying to force get the some action. points. You know, I my ego was uh, was what it was, and these guys. Oh, there's a kid trying to headlock and uh, didn't get it. Oh, Charlie might have got it off. Get, he might have got, got two out of it. Out of he got, got two, two out of it. Yeah, nice little scramble there at the end. Ben Bradley was trying to get those back points. But my ego didn't allow me to say, uh, stop, stop, it hurts. It was I, I was always, is that all you got? And yeah. <laughs> then they'd really crank it, and I really wanted to say, yo, stop, it's hurting. <laughs> and the young man is Alex Faust, or a sophomore with a 2-7 and seven record. And this is... Ben is one of the Montoursville's better wrestlers. Rennie has his record here, but I'm sure it's pretty good. Got a 17 and three record. He yeah, was uh, third place, third place the top at tournament. Um, solid young wrestler. He's a, a junior. Uh, so I know he just moved here in the last year or so from Montgomery. Um, and I remember his father. His father was a tough wrestler, uh, Keith uh, Keith Bennett from Montgomery. Uh, I think I was telling you earlier. Bennett with a takedown. I think I was telling you earlier, I'm pretty sure he was a uh, state qualifier for Montgomery back in 90, 91, something like that. Here's, uh, again, Alex Browse uh, for Warrior Runs, only a sophomore with a 2-7 and seven record. Uh, looks, looks like, like uh, up that cradle. Bennett's trying for a cradle and got his hands locked. He's and, got uh, it. Taking him over, and he's got that cradle. A lot of time left, over a minute, 15 seconds, and... And from where he runs, doing his best to get out of that, but uh, it's getting tighter and tighter. And and Rocky's right down there looking at it. Uh, he sure is. You know what? What I like about a referee is is consistency in falls, and and that's Rocky's <laughs> making sure they're pinned. He is consistent. He really looks like he he makes sure that those both those blades are down. He's got count and it's you know the, the fans here are saying they're slow pins but it's consistent slow pins both teams it is he's calling it the same both yep. ways that's what i like about officials you can argue with them no if, if you got a guy like that who's being consistent both yep. ways then i got Absolutely. no issue i have no issues with it they forfeited to zach lebaron and every fan here wanted to see lebaron and, and bukowski 
go at 45 because uh, LeBaron is one of their better young men. He's a senior, he's 14 and 0, was, was uh, Dan Klingerman Invitational Champion. Three-time sectional champion, three-time district champion, uh, three-time state qualifier, 2015 Northeast Regional Champion, career record 134-9. They, and nine. they so actually great. corrected me on that career record. It's 124-9, and nine, Coach. Oh, okay. I spoke to uh, uh, Jeremy Betts. He corrected me on that. Uh, he had given us 134, but he's 124 and 9, which is still an outstanding, well, exactly. outstanding high not school Not much career. difference between 134 and 124. The young no. man's a great, great wrestler, and and uh, Monturzo has this match sewed up, and they forfeit it to Zach. I'm sure Zach is not happy about that because he's a competitor, and I'm sure he wanted to wrestle tonight. You know, I know my son. At times, they forfeited to him, and it, it made my son so angry because he was a competitor. He wanted to wrestle. I'm sure Zach's the same way. Warrior Run has appears to no takedown yet, but uh, Rocky didn't award a takedown yet, but real close to it. Now he got it, and he's got uh, He's this down there. young man from Warrior Run is uh, Ty Kirkner, a sophomore who's only a seven and six record. Just about to Okay, PA. Uh, just a little note here. PA Sports Live for uh, the Montoursville wrestlers tonight. Um, the winner of the match here tonight as uh, a, a CD burned a CD, uh, courtesy of PA Sports Live and Allstate uh, the Road Armor Agency. Uh, burned a uh, CD of tonight's match for every one of the uh, Montorzo wrestlers to receive. So you have that personal uh, CD of this entire event that you can watch when you're 50 years old and with your grandson and show them how, uh, how you did. I always enjoyed, I always liked watching the, the uh, the replays from the football games from from years ago, and especially when you had the the guys, the commentators, and the guys talking about it, announcing the uh, football games. Of course, wrestling, we had nothing like this back oh, in the day. <laughs> you know, and, and people ask me, about, and, and I keep mentioning my son, and uh, you know, I'm very very proud of my son. He passed away in an automobile accident a little over a year ago, but uh, he was a four-time district champion, and R Rennie here can appreciate this. Four-time district champion, he was a uh, three-time regional champion, four-time finalist. In his ninth grade year, he lost in the finals of regionals to the same individual he lost to in the finals of state, and he was a four-time state finalist and finally won it his senior year, but phenomenal wrestler, and, and I, you know, I keep mentioning him. Again, I'm very, very proud of my son, but I see, uh, I see shades of, of my son and guys like uh, the Hoffman brothers and, and Zach LeBaron and Bukowski. They're great, great wrestlers, but... I mean, Rennie can, can attest to this in, in AAA, if you're a four-time district champion, four-time regional finalist, three-time winner, and four-time state finalist, you, you're a pretty good wrestler. <laughs> to wrestle at that level for four years is just incredible. That's a record I hope gets beat sometime, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's take, a, take something to do it. I mean, you look at some of the phenomenal up and up and coming wrestlers here at, with Montoursville, like Gavin Hoffman, mm -hmm. who had a phenomenal freshman campaign, ending sixth. But uh, you to know, to be in the finals, to be in the finals, the finals as a freshman, is, a freshman. Is a, is a, a my son did some sometimes that amazed me. Good scrap here, uh, the Montoursville. Excuse me, the the Warrior Run young man's up five zero. Uh, and again, this is Ty Kirkner, only a sophomore, seven six record. And who's the young man from Montoursville? I think we have uh, we have Gary uh, Lakes uh, Jr. here. Uh, or I'm sorry, Gary Lakes. He's a, a junior, five and eleven, um, for Montoursville. And of course, they moved him away from uh, LeBaron because LeBaron's an outstanding wrestler for Warrior Run. Good fight here. Uh, uh, it's called a wizard. He, one Thursday young man has. He can convert it. Uh, might be able to get some points out of this. 
So far hasn't been able to, and the limped arm oh, out I, of it. But but uh, where Run was able to capture that leg when he limped arm out. Yeah. You know, we saw something that, uh, yeah, he did get an escape out of that. It was a nice fight. Actually hit a Gamby right there and was able to come out, out through that. Score five to one. Warrior run. Ty Kirkner is up. Five to one, second period. Nice deep shot. Fireman's Converts and into Fireman's. Nice. Get it. Nice. Should have it if you can clear that arm. And there that's it is. two. Making the score a little more interesting. 5 3. I was just about to say if Weir Run could win this match, it would end up, the score would end up reflecting a little closer match than it's probably actually been. Trying to, trying to tie up a cradle here. See a lot of cradles in both sides here and uh, a lot of legs. I tell you, I watched that uh, leg cradle that, was that Gavin or was that yeah, Garrett Hoffman with that leg One cradle? of the Hoffmans, oh. I don't know which one, but. That it, was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was. You don't see that very often. No, you just got to sit back as a coach and as a former Trying wrestler. To you got to get out of this and didn't get it. You sit back and admire the athleticism when a kid does something like that. Well, one of the Huffmans, and I forget which one, actually did a cartwheel as a setup. I don't know if you watched that. I missed that. Yeah. I've got to go back and watch that again. I wonder which one of the Yonkins showed him that uh, cartwheel as the guy's watching him do a cartwheel. He comes out of it and takes a shot. I, I don't know. They're a little bigger and older, <laughs> like like us. I don't know if either of them are doing cartwheels. It's <laughs> like Lakes uh, got injured there. And again, and, uh, uh, Rocky didn't give the points because of that injury. I don't know. Here, Coach Betts is coming out to talk to him to say, "Hey, where where are the points?" And again, uh, PA Sports Live dot com and uh, the Road Armo Allstate Insurance Agency. Oh, commercial. Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years. We've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. At 13 dealerships. With over 500 employees across central Pennsylvania. Every brand you want. The largest selection. And a low price guarantee. Visit any area Blaze Alexander Family Dealership. Taking the deals the other guys won't. Guaranteed. Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. Guaranteed. Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years, we've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. The largest selection and a low price guaranteed. Blaze Alexander Family. And again, uh, saying that PASportsLive.com and the Road Armel <coughs> Agency will be given uh, CDs of the match to the Montoursville wrestlers after the match, which is pretty, pretty nice. That's a very nice gesture. It's, it's something these kids can have forever. And we were saying, you know, back when Tommy wrestled, you didn't have these miniature cameras. And a lot of people asked me for films of Tommy. And we had those big, bulky cameras. <laughs> had and to carry a we, suitcase. <laughs> yeah, he had to carry a suitcase. And we took the whole team at a time. We didn't see individual ones. So I have very little <coughs> of Tommy. Where you run is uh, got a takedown and getting some back points here with a tilt. What year did Tommy graduate? 89. Okay. They had actually started to miniaturize those cameras a little bit by the time I was in there. And, yeah. and uh, I have a little more tape uh, from, when, uh, from when, when we wrestled. Yeah, I don't have much tape of my son. I just have great memories. Funny, I break those out once in a while and show them to my 12-year-old my, uh, and 15-year-old daughter. And uh, they say, who the heck is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it might be a blessing in disguise. You have daughters, because I got a little grandson, my <laughs> son's son, and, and uh, I'm back coaching Loyal Sock Elementary. And I tell you what, you know, you, it's tough as a father watching your son wrestle. And yeah, I uh, I do sometimes uh, count my blessings there. Hey, it's uh, Warrior, uh, Warrior Run took a shot, but a good counter by uh, Lakes. Didn't get the points out of it. Almost took him over in an elevator type situation. Let's 
Third period, a minute 20 left. Uh, Warrior run up 10-2. Could be, looks like it's gonna be. See Coach Smythe over there yelling instructions, the whole coaching staff yelling instructions to his young man, but there is such a thing as a, uh, a defensive gonna... pin, you know? You can pin yourself in I wrestling. I was gonna say, I'm looking for a stalemate here, calling mm -hmm. any second here. Job officiating this match. Where your run man working? Uh, to probably try and put him on his back. Not much time left. Uh, 40 seconds left. Probably going to end about a 10-3 match. Although Warrior Run young man is is working it. Got another takedown out of it. Now it's a 12-3 match. Ty Kirkner. A sophomore for Warrior Run. He picked up that bonus point for the team. Yes, he did. And uh, Warrior, uh, excuse me, Monturville. Monturville is going to remain undefeated, and Warrior Run is going to suffer its only second loss of the season. Monturville now is, what, 12 and 0. Got some real guns in there. They sure do. I, I lot, I'm sure a lot of the fans are disappointed that they didn't see the LeBaron Bukowski matchup, but wise decision on Montoursville switching their guys around and really, really paid off for them. Yeah, still a great match tonight. Oh, a great match. 35 25. Uh, Smythe can be proud. Smythe can be proud of his team. Yeah. And uh, again, Randy, it was a pleasure doing this with you. Yep, thanks for having me here tonight, Coach Best. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe we can do it again sometime. And uh, just want to thank the sponsors again tonight, uh, Blaze Alexander, uh, Web Weekly, The Villa, DeSanto Sub, Snyder's, Sweet Corn, and uh, the Road Armour Allstate Insurance Agency. Yeah, I personally want to thank your dad for doing this for us. You know, I know your dad well. Uh, I know Blaze Alexander. You know, I know Charlie very well. I know the, the Krause family of the Villa. I know Jimmy Webb. Uh, you know, I know the Snyders, Ricky, and, and all those brothers. I want to personally thank those guys for sponsoring this and making this happen for wrestling. This is great for wrestling. You know, great for these young men. Uh, great exposure. Uh, I think it's just phenomenal what this is doing. You know, we got calls in from Pittsburgh. Uh, Right now, there's 105 college coaches watching this. You know, people are watching this and calling in as far away as Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's just 105 the, college coaches with all the different logged on to there. Yeah. So that's that's pretty that's pretty incredible. That, uh, this that, is that great exposure. for the sport. Back when when Tommy wrestled, when you wrestled, they didn't have anything like this. Absolutely not. And very rarely was it televised. I mean, you know, uh, they don't get much local coverage here. The newspaper doesn't. Uh, have a whole lot of local coverage and, and very rarely do you see it on TV. And right now someone could sit in their uh, living room and get this computer transferred to the TV and watch this on TV. Well, a lot of people have the smart TVs nowadays. They can Absolutely. just log right on their TV and pull the site up and you're watching the match on TV. And again, we want to really, really thank uh, PASportsLive.com. Uh, Rizzo does quite a bit for all athletics around here. I know he does this for football, for basketball. He just started doing this, he approached me and asked me about it uh, earlier this year, and I said, Riz, that'd be a great thing to do. Let's do it, and first one at Williamsport, first time ever, and we're getting so much response uh, over the internet for this. People think it's a great thing, and I believe it's a great thing for this sport of wrestling. I, I, said, I know when I talked to Rizzo, I said, I think you'll be surprised at the number of hits you're gonna get, um, at, at the number of hits you're actually gonna get. Uh, of mm -hmm. people logging on to watch high school wrestling, well, especially when you have a good match like you do tonight. Well, I know the first one we did, they honored my son and they showed his uh, his state championship match, uh, you know, his senior year, he won it and it, it was didn't take very long, about a minute and a half, very, very impressive. And my son was kind of known because he won a junior national Greco Roman championship as a junior. Uh, in fact, on that, that tournament he beat a young man from California Heath Sims who was on two Olympic teams representing the United States in Greco-Roman and that match alone had almost last I looked had almost 12,000 
hits and that, our views. That's just incredible. That's incredible. I mean, I don't know if it's a tribute to my son. I hope it is. But, I mean, 12,000 views on that match. Uh, and these, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of views on this. On this, and, and people are watching this throughout the United States, throughout the world. This goes worldwide. Um, I saw it. I saw it on social media. The uh, the amount of uh, uh, hype over the the broadcast. How many people shared it with relatives mm -hmm. that weren't in the area that wanted to tune in and watch the match tonight? As I said, uh, Eric uh, Steinbacher, you know, on Tuesday approached me and said, "Hey, this is great. They have relatives in different." states and and they can watch this you know his Never brother is down in uh, his brother lives down in southern pa and i know he was tuned in the other night and i know he was going to be watching again tonight i mean these so. young men can have a a relative in uh, germany and they can watch this you know it's it's an unbelievable thing and i want to thank pa sports live.com for this uh next tuesday i believe it's hughesville williamsport we'll be doing this again uh, it should be a very competitive match. Williamsport's looking relatively good. They're coming back up, and I know Hughesville has a great tradition. Uh, so tune in again next Tuesday, the 19th, I believe it is, for Hughesville Williamsport live stream by PASportsLive.com. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this match tonight. Thank you for being are watching. Or better yet, do you need a commercial created? I can personally help you create your own commercial that will air on PASportsLive.com. All you have to do is ask and I'll be there with an HD camera and a mic. Call PA Sports Live today and ask for Kirsten. Hi, I'm Kirsten from PASportsLive.com, the only high school live streaming network in PA bringing you high quality football and basketball games. Do you want to make it to the big game but your schedule won't allow it? Want to check in on your hometown's latest challenge or preview an upcoming opponent? Then you need to sign on to PASportsLive.com. The website is simple to use. Just log in, create a username and password, and you're ready to watch the game. Tied up during game time? Log in the next day to catch the replay. Please, Alexander Family Dealerships. For over 30 years. We've been doing anything it takes to satisfy anyone who walks through the door. At 13 dealerships. With over 500 employees across central Pennsylvania. Every brand you want. The largest selection. And a low price guarantee. Visit any area Blaze Alexander family dealership. Taking the deals the other guys won't. Guaranteed. Blaze Alexander family.